we have seen in compressible fluid flow, we have derived its continuity equation as well as we have derived what is Bernoulli's equation in isothermal process and adiabatic process. Let us apply all these formulas to solve real life problem on compressible fluid flow. <music> So, we have a problem over here which states that a gas is flowing through a horizontal pipe having area of cross section as 40 cm square which is given to us where the pressure is given to us as 40 Newton per cm square and the temperature is 15 degree Celsius. So, we have given at one section we know area of cross section pressure as well as temperature. Another section the area of cross section is 20 meters per meters 20 centimeter square. So now we can see the area is decreasing and the pressure is 30 Newton per centimeter gauge pressure and here also they have given us gauge pressure. If the mass uh, mass flow rate of the gas through the pipe is 0 0.5 find the velocities at the sections assuming it is as a isothermal change isothermal change means temperature remains constant hence the temperature at the inlet and the outlet is 15 degrees celsius and the mass is same mass flow rate is same according to continuity equation we have to take this r as universal gas constant is 9 uh, to 92 newton meter per kg newton meter is actually what is a joule per uh, kg kelvin and atmospheric pressure is 10 centimeter 10 newton per centimeter square so all these data is given to us let us write down this data separately so we have two sections over here first of all we'll draw a diagram so initially it is a horizontal pipe with the decreasing diameter so from this a gas is flowing through and here also gas is flowing through now at this section at section 1 of 1 we have a row 1 area a1 velocity v1 as well as z1 similarly row 2 a2 velocity v2 and z2 here z1 is equals to z2 since it is a horizontal pipe and this is flowing from section 1 1 and it is flowing through to section 2 2 so this is how the fluid is flowing now we have to note that it is an isothermal process isothermal process that means t1 is equals to t2 let us write down what things we know in the inlet and what things we know in the outlet. So let us write this down. So first thing which we know that is the area A1 is equals to 40 centimeter square. So this is 40 into 10 to power minus 4 meter square. Similarly at the outlet A2 the area is 20 centimeter square. And that A2 is equals to 20 to the 10 to power minus 4 meter square. Then we know what is pressure P1 at the inlet. It is given to us as 40 Newton per centimeter square. That can be converted into Newton per meter square. So this is 40. But the pressure given over here is gauge pressure according to our question. So the total pressure will be the gauge pressure plus atmospheric pressure. So we'll add these two terms. So that will be 40 plus 10 that is absolute into 10 raised to minus 4 that is Newton per centimeter square 10 raised to positive 4 newton per meter square so this is 50 into 10 to power 4 newton per meter square pressure p2 is 30 plus 10 into 10 raised to 4 newton per meter square now how this we ha how we have come to this conclusion here 30 newton per centimeter gauge pressure is given so gauge plus atmospheric will give us that the absolute pressure so over here the pressure at that point is 40 into 10 raised to 4 Newton per meter square. So we have evaluated 
the pressure as well as the area at the inlet. The next part which is given to us that let us divide this first. So temperature T1 is a 15 degree Celsius so that is 288 Kelvin since it is isothermal T2 is also 288 Kelvin. Next part at the mass flow rate a m which is same for both part is 0 0.5 kg per second this is what they have given to us and and value of other constant that is universal gas constant is given to us that is 292 so let us write down this part r is equals to 292 joule per kilo kelvin so this part is given to us so now let us evaluate the first thing over here by knowing all this data. So, we know that M is equals to rho 1 A1 V1 which is equals to rho 2 A2 V2. This is continuity equation for a incompressible fluid flow. Now, in this part which we have over here, we know the value of A1, we know the value of uh, a2 we don't know value of rho 1 and rho 2 so for that we use we can use the equation of isothermal condition that is p upon rho is equals to r into t which is actually constant so let us apply that at the inlet at the outlet and at the outlet so this is p1 upon rho 1 is equals to r into t1 Similarly, P2 upon rho 2 is equals to R into T2. So, let us evaluate the value of rho 1. Rho 1 is equals to, that is P1 upon R into T1. And rho 2 is equals to P2 upon R into T2. So, let us evaluate this part. We should substitute the values. This should be 50 into 10 to power 4 upon r is 292 this is 288 kelvin on calculation of this part we get rho is equals to 5.945 kg per meter cube so this is the value of rho at section 1 1 similarly at section 2 2 uh, rho will be equals to 30 into 10 raised to 4 upon 292 into 288 so rho 2 will give us a value which is equals to 4.75 kg per meter cube so we have evaluated value of rho 1 and rho 2 now once we substitute that in continuity equation we can calculate the values of velocity so what is continuity equation we'll write down here again that is rho 1 a1 v1 and m is equals to rho 2 a2 into v2 so let us evaluate this we know this is 0.5 density we have calculated 5.4 5.945 area is a 40 into 10 to power minus 4 into we have value of v1 so v1 will get as equals to 21.02 meters per second similarly on the other side we'll get this as 0 0.5 into rho has a value of 4.75 area has a value of 20 into 10 to power minus 4 into v2 so v2 on evaluation of all this will give us 52.46 meters per second so we have calculated the value of v1 and v2 here we didn't had to apply Bernoulli's equation we can calculate this with the help of continuity equation so i hope you have understood how we have used all the equation using isothermal condition to solve the problem and calculate the velocity at the inlet and the outlet thank you